So it's a pleasure for me to be here again and uh, to have the opportunity to make a few remarks on uh, integration policy, on the importance of integration policy in Germany, and certainly, uh, especially, uh, I'm looking forward for the discussing um, the actual topics with you. So um, I will make a few remarks on integration and the formation of identity. Uh, these are the concepts which I would like to discuss with you today. I must admit that this is a major challenge. Uh, this is apparent from the scale of the topic. It encompasses uh, tragedy, such as the dramatic events involving refugees uh, off the coast of uh, Lampedusa last uh, October, and uh, it still occurs uh, nearly every week, uh, and joyous occasions. The German national football team, as you know, is an example of successful integration, and uh, I will come to it um, in a moment again. I would like to start by describing some aspects of the political debate about um, integration and then outline some of the resulting challenges for politicians uh, before concluding with the policy measures adopted in Germany in the last years. Integration versus assimilation. Let me start by explaining what, in my view, integration does not mean and cannot mean. It is not about assimilation. It is not about migrants, their values, their attitudes, their customs, and their lifestyles being subsumed in a German way of life so that no trace of their migration background remains visible. That cannot work, not least because there is no longer one single German way of life. Uh, for um, If we look uh, at the reality of life in our local communities, it is obvious that there have been major changes in the recent years. And uh, as I mentioned, I just uh, came from Munich and I'm a Bavarian and certainly uh, we are quite uh, different from the uh, people here in the north of Germany. And if you travel around Germany, you will um, make the experience that uh, there is not one German way of life. Uh, the Bavarians are um, in a certain way um, so-called uh, northern Italians and uh, the people here in the in the north of uh, Germany or in the northeast of Germany, they are so-called so uh, uh, South Sweden. So in a certain way, there is not one German and there is certainly there is not one German way of life. In many ways, life has become more open, more diverse and more colorful in Germany. And this is, this is a big asset for Germany. Integration and the multicultural society. The idea of the multicultural society, at least in the past, was linked to a concept which, in my view, is not conducive to successful integration. Also, the concept initially sounded appealing in terms of preserving migrants' uh, identities. It's important to remember that the idea of multiculturalism conflicts with real integration because it demands too little from both sides, from migrants themselves and from the society into which they migrate. The result is a parallel exi uh, existence with no relationship between them, not in a genuine and a shared life within our community. And you can even uh, make this experience here in, uh, in Berlin. If you go to Kreuzberg, there are some streets uh, in which uh, you can uh, conduct your life uh, without only speaking one um, word of German. Um, all your life is done in, uh, in, in, in Turkish. So I think uh, this is not the role model we want to have. And in the past, there was far too much laissez-faire in multicolorism. The results of this overly passive immigration policy can be observed in the social flashpoints of our major cities today. But what does integration mean? Integration is a political and social logical term for the social and political inclusion of individuals or groups within the population who have a distinct identity such as ethnicity, religion or language. This is an abstract definition, but in a sense, it is not abstract at all for the question which policymakers and governments must address is how integration should be shaped 
so that it does not lead to assimilation or a multicultural society. So what should be reached? In my view, it should be about fostering a sense of cohesion, a sense of belonging to and belonging in society. But how is this goal to be achieved? First of all, by ensuring that everyone involved is aware that it has to be a two-way process. Integration is not a one-way street. For integration to work, immigrants into Germany must want to feel at home here. That means sending a clear message that anyone who does not want to live as we live in Germany, anyone who would prefer, for example, to live as, someone, as some people in the Islamic world think life should be lived, is unlikely to satisfy the requirements for successful integration here in Germany. The desire to feel at home here is essential. Anyone who does not, under any circumstances, want their children to grow up in a liberal Western society is making the wrong choice uh, if he or she decides to live in Germany. Migrants do have to accept the conditions of life in their chosen country. Otherwise, the outcome is a failed integration process with nothing but losers on both sides. If I were living in a place where I didn't want to live, I would try to change my situation. But uh, it's not a one-way street, as I said, so the reverse also applies. Those who have been living here for some time must be willing to help ensure that the others do not simply exist here, but actually feel at home here. And it's not enough simply to want that to happen. It is also about admitting that the living conditions and the lives of the indigenous population will also change. Ultimately, integration also means equal opportunities and equal social participation. Integration cannot be judged a success until that it is achieved. And, it's not, and it is not enough for the equality to be established theoretically. It must be achieved in practice, which means that it must exist in the real world. If policymakers follow these guidelines, it is possible, in my view, to ensure that the migrant's identity is preserved. It may sound somewhat simplistic, but if the goal of unity in diversity is achieved, a fair and equitable, equitable balance of interests can be established between immigrants and the host society. For instance, we have the German Islam Conference. Ladies and gentlemen, my comments might sound rather abstract to you at first, so I would like to give you an example to show that politics is not on only about theoretical concepts. Politicians are also taking practical steps to progress integration. The example that I have in mind is the German Islam Conference. It was initiated by the prior Interior Minister Dr. Wolfgang Schäuble and was first convened in 2006. It marks the start of a long-term dialogue between the government and the Muslims living in Germany and is intended to promote their integration from both a fair policy and a social policy perspective. The German Islam Conference is, in my view, a good example of successful and sustainable efforts to promote integration. Ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to outline the current immigration trends in Germany before moving on to the practical response from policy policymakers. Let me say, first of all, that the overall situation with regard to immigration in Germany is extremely diverse as the causes of migration are almost as numerous and varied as the countries of origin themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to overwhelm you with statistics, so I shall confine myself to a few key data which relate to 2012. As regards the immigration of Union citizens, it is striking that the arrival figures have increased by more than one-fifth, with Spain, Greece, and Portugal topping the, tab the table here, which is probably due to the efforts uh, of the financial and uh, economic crisis in these countries, and therefore comes as no surprise. There are no significant problems with the integration of these migrant groups. We can 
also detect a clear trend when we look at immigration from third countries. Here the figures are rising sharply and the biggest increase relates to immigration on humanitarian grounds, whereas the figures for family reunion have remained more or less constant. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to look at this particular reason for immigration in more detail and briefly outline a legal issue which shows how difficult it is for policymakers to respond to identified failures. The European Court of Justice recently ruled that in the context of family reunion, the language requirement for Turkish spouses applying for residence in Germany is illegal. This decision does not promote integration efforts in Germany. On the contrary, the acquisition of language skills is essential for successful integration. Another factor comes into play here. The language requirement also helps to protect women who come to Germany to be with their husbands, for it is the only way to ensure that these women are not being forced into marriage. How can a wife in a foreign country draw attention to her suffering if she does not have even basic language skills? I have described the court's judgment in some detail here in order to show you that the efforts by policymakers and government in Germany sometimes face constraints and that, is a, that it is a problem which especially affects women. Ladies and gentlemen, the current trend in the figure, figures for asylum seekers is worrying. In order to give you a clear picture of the situation, I need to give you some statistics. In the first six months of 2014, in the first six months of this year, the Federal Office for Migration and Refugees received more than 77,000 applications for asylum. This is an increase of around 60% compared with the same period last year. Only 11,818 persons were recognized as refugees under the Geneva Convention. The main countries of origins were Syria with uh, hardly um, with, uh, with more than 12,000 uh, applications and Serbia with uh, 9,361 applications. This figure alone has more than doubled compared with the first two quarters of 2013. The sharp rise in the number of applications is pushing the public authorities to their limits. Major efforts are needed to process the very large volume of applications. But policymakers are not standing by and watching these developments without taking action. They have uh, already been, they, we have already adopted measures to expedite the processing of these large numbers of applications. For example, the German Bundestag recently adopted a decision to declare three countries in the Western Balkans, Serbia, Macedonia and Bosnia-Herzegovina as safe countries of origin. On the face of it, this may seem like action taken on the back of refugees from these countries. But uh, that is not the case. Applications from these three countries are rejected on principle because they do not meet the criteria for the granting of asylum and are therefore groundless. The Bundesrat, the second chamber of the uh, German um, law making system, has still to give its consent to these three countries' designation as safe countries of origin. But I'm confident that this will take place in autumn this year. This decision will free up resources enabling asylum applications from Syria, for example, to be processed more quickly. I have to mention that two thirds of all refugees from, uh, and asylum seekers from Syria who have come to the European Union uh, have come to Germany and uh, from the start of the cruel and uh, unhumanitarian uh, civil war in Syria, more than 40,000 asylum seekers and refugees from um, Syria have found a new home here in Germany. And so almost 100% of these applications of Syrians are approved, incidentally. Ladies and gentlemen, I feel it is important to make it clear that policymakers in Germany are not trying to keep all asylum seekers per se out of Germany. But we want to do this, but we want, 
but uh, uh, what we want to do is to ensure that those who are clearly being persecuted and urgently need our assistance and solidarity are given help as quickly as possible. And these are, for instance, now in these times, uh, especially the refugees from Syria. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, let me emphasize that integration is an important and a challenging task which must be progressed not only by policymakers, but by all groups and individuals with or without a migration, migration background in our society working together. Everyone with a sense of good will must address this challenge. Sports clubs have a particularly important role to play in this context for they, for they give young migrants the opportunity to get to know other young people and I think there is nearly, uh, there's no other uh, way of integration on a very low level like sports. Uh, you don't need to uh, speak perfect German and you can play together. And uh, this is, uh, I think, the ideal way to meet other persons from other countries and other continents um, without any barriers. A particularly good example is the German national football team, as I mentioned at the start. Over the last few weeks, they have not only delighted us with their skills on the pitch, many of our top players have a migration background, some from Turkey, some from Poland, and are very good role models for young migrants, for they show that in Germany, the door is open for people with migration backgrounds to reach the top in their chosen careers. Ladies and gentlemen, we must manage the, the integration of migrants successfully. This is an immense challenge, but Germany simply cannot afford to fail. But with more and more people becoming aware of this, the importance of the migration project in Germany, I'm confident that our efforts to master this Herculean task will be successful. And there is one word of the current um, government that we want to create a new culture of uh, acceptance and a new culture of welcome here in Germany and uh, I'm quite uh, optimistic that uh, this uh, track uh, will be successful. We are on a good way and uh, well, if I could uh, sum up I would say um, in 2005, there was a shift in the integration policy in Germany from 2005 on. Uh, integration policy was on the top uh, political agenda on the federal level in Germany. Before 2005, a lot uh, was spoken about uh, integration policy, but uh, not uh, a lot of steps and a lot of measures uh, have been undertaken under all different uh, governments. But uh, for hardly, uh, for, for nearly um, 10 years now, I think we are, we are quite um, pushy in this, in this topic. And as I mentioned, the, um, the Islam conference, uh, there is also to mention the integration uh, summit, which takes place once in a year. Uh, from 2005 on, we have um, a state secretary in the German government who is responsible for the integration policy. From 2005 on, uh, we made the uh, offer for immigrants uh, to make German language courses, integration courses, and until now, 1.5 million immigrants uh, have um, conducted this um, uh, and have uh, um, attended this um, language and integration courses. Uh, only from the federal level, we spent more than 1 billion euros for these uh, integration and uh, and the language courses, certainly this is uh, only one uh, key point. It's not uh, as, um, sufficient, but uh, I think on the other levels, on the state level, as I mentioned, we, we have a federal level here in Germany and uh, for the integration policy, also the 16 states are very important and certainly the uh, communal uh, authorities have to do a lot. So I think all uh, different uh, political levels uh, in Germany have understood that uh, we must uh, push forward uh, these uh, efforts in integration, um, certainly in the humanitarian way. I mentioned uh, 
the large increase of asylum seekers in Germany. We have last year most of the uh, no, there was no other country on our globe which had received so many refugees and asylum seekers as Germany. We had even more than the United States of America. So uh, I think uh, we are we have a quite humanitarian uh, asylum law in Germany. We are open for everyone uh, who is tortured uh, or who is uh, persecuted in his home uh, country um, because of uh, religion, religious or uh, uh, ethnic uh, reasons. Uh, and on the other hand, I, I still uh, would like to mention that in the near future and even in the next decades, I'm convinced that Germany will need more uh, workers um, from uh, outside the European uh, Union. Um, as you know, we, we have a demographic, uh, a demographic problem here in Germany, or I would not say problem, but it's a challenge. And it's not, not, not only uh, Germany has this challenge, a lot of countries, especially in Europe, have the same um, challenge. And I think uh, if we want to hold this high standard of living in Germany and uh, this high level of, um, of uh, economic welfare and economic uh, progress, uh, we will uh, be dependent on more um, immigration from outside of the um, uh, European Union. So it's in our own interest, in our own Germans, uh, Germany's interest that uh, we concentrate on this important topic of migration and integration. And uh, as I mentioned, I'm quite optimistic that we are on a good way and in the end we will be successful. So, oh, um, Sorry, uh, Philip, I'm a student of international relations and I would like to point out a couple of things that I've noticed uh, during a lecture because you seem to, in my opinion, uh, consistently, consistently contradict yourself with uh, your point about integration versus identity. Because you said earlier you know, at the start of your lecture um, that integration should be about preserving some remnants of identity, and yet um, you seem to deny immigrants that their right to, sp to speak their own language in this country. The second point is, uh, and I think that is very strongly connected with the first point, that your view of immigrants seems to be based on a very stereotypical and prejudiced view, um, um, view of particularly Muslim immigrants when you talked about protecting women, um, which I believe is very much a minority problem rather, well, a, a problem of a very, very, very small minority of immigrants rather than a generalized problem. Um, thirdly, you mentioned the football team and how immigrants can reach the, reach the top, but how many immigrants are actually in top positions in Germany in any other field rather than sports, let's say in, eco in economy, in, in culture, etc., in politics as well? Thank you. Hi, hello, my name is Princess. Um, <coughs> uh, you talked about the system of immigration in German, Germany as a system of integration. I would like to, from what he said, I think um, I would like to make, make mention of, because I'm from France, and I discovered that the system of immigration, I mean, the way France treats immigrants, actually, in fr I mean, in France, is the system of assimilation. For instance, if someone is coming, especially most of the immigrants are coming into France, they are actually, most of them are actually graduate from the university, bachelor's degree or, that, or master's degree or that. But when they come into, the, I mean, into, into France, this, what they have to do is that they have to go through the language system to set first to learn the language. And after that, instead of integrating them into maybe kind of getting a job in their line of, of qualification, they have to start, it's like they have to start all over from the beginning. They are not recognized, certificates are not recognized. It doesn't matter if they are master degree or their PhD or whatever, they have to start from the beginning. It's like they're kind of changing their career from the beginning because they are not accepted. Mm. I mean, I mean, when you measure the system of integration as in, uh, in, in Germany, I have a, I have a, I have a reason to, to, me to, to kind of look at, I mean, try to compare the system of Germ Germany and the France together because they, they are almost the same. I look at this, it's almost like assimilation as well because even, the, first of all, the language, which is normal, because when you are going to settle among some people, you have to, I mean, to learn their language as well. But what about the, the qualification? Because I noticed one thing in Germany that is only artists, only the artists that I mean, they are, they are, I mean, that are, I mean, are able to, I mean, succeed in settling down in Germany. I mean, from the maybe some artists or maybe writers or whatever or the, from the film industry. But as far as any other qualification is concerned, it's just as it's almost the same thing. There's no difference between the German, the German system of migrants. I mean, 
I mean, accept, acceptance of migrants as, as well as in France. It's almost the same as assimilation. Even though it looks, you might say it's not assimilation because what, when I already said it's not assimilation, it's integration. But from what I've discovered so far along the years, I mean, I discovered that it's, it's, it's assimilation as in France, so it's, mm -hmm. there's no difference. Thank you. Uh, I do share the views of Philip. He mentioned earlier when you said about the family reunion. I think your views are very much orientalistic about Turkish society, and this problem is very rare problem in Turkey. And you say uh, if they don't know, uh, learn the language, there will be problems. Mm. But what if, as a German, you fell in love with a lady, let's say from uh, from South Korea, and uh, uh, she needs to learn German? It will take one year, and she ca you cannot get married with her. <laughs> is this a <laughs> I mean, this is not normal. I mean, this, this comment, I don't share your views, and uh, that's what I meant to... Um, uh, I, I don't want to be uh, understood in the wrong way. I, I, I'm uh, absolutely not... Uh, um, I, I don't um, think that um, uh, we should uh, deny the, mi the migrants uh, to speak their own language. Certainly they should and they can speak their own language in their family and with their relatives and in their, in their sports clubs or, or wherever they want. But if you want to be successful in Germany, you have to uh, at least um, have the ability to, um, to speak in a certain way um, uh, the basic German. Uh, and uh, if this is not possible and if you can't speak German, um, I would, um, I would um, uh, promise you that it will be quite hard to be successful in the German society. Uh, it's, it will be difficult to find friends here in Germany. It will be difficult to find uh, a job. And so I think there was a consensus in, uh, among the policymakers in the German Bundestag, at least in the, in the last um, two governments, that um, the, the, no, it's, it's not uh, sufficient. Uh, to, to learn um, German in order to be successful in the German society, but it's uh, necessary. And uh, we demanded uh, this, uh, this condition, this precondition, uh, before their, um, uh, their migration to, to Germany. And uh, um, if I may uh, just uh, go to the, to, the, to the last point with the South uh, Korean um, uh, marriage, or marriage to a South Korean girl, we we had, unfortunately, we made the experience that, um, especially among um, um, the Turkish population, um, the phenomenon of uh, uh, forced marriage um, occurs. And uh, we didn't make the experience that uh, uh, this phenomenon of forced marriage occurs among uh, uh, South Koreans and uh, German and South Koreans. So I think there is. Uh, there is um, 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 justification uh, for the point that we we made this precondition. Now the judges of the uh, European uh, Court of Justice um, uh, 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 said uh, this is uh, not legal to the not in accordance to the European law, but in a certain way uh, they. Um, didn't say it at all that it's not uh, that it's illegal. Um, they said under certain uh, circ uh, under um, uh, circ uh, certain uh, s conditions it's not uh, legal. And uh, these conditions are that we you need a um, 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 sentence for um, uh, you need you need uh, an, accep an exception uh, acceptance for uh, those uh, who are not able because of. Uh, um, because of their uh, ability, because of an illness, uh, to learn German. Uh, so, in a certain way, under circum cir certain uh, circumstances, uh, we can uh, um, make it uh, in this way that uh, we demand uh, the uh, certain uh, German skills before their, uh, uh, their mig migration to Germany. And certainly, everyone can marry. It. Marry. It's not not. Uh, but the other way is uh, if your uh, spouse can move to, uh, to your hometown in, in Germany. And uh, to be clear, uh, these uh, preconditions are not very high. You don't uh, need to, to learn perfect German. You don't need to attend a German language course for one year. 
uh, as you mentioned, it's uh, absolutely uh, sufficient uh, when you can, uh, when you are able to to speak uh, basic German. So only a few words. It's the level A1. So it's not very high. It's a, it's a quite quite low level. There are different levels uh, of of German tests, and uh, those who is uh, which is uh, uh, demanded from, uh, for instance, from spouses uh, from Turkey to to move to, uh, to their, their husband in Germany, uh, it's the lowest level of, uh, of a German test. So I, I think it's, uh, it's acceptable. And uh, certainly after the summer um, break, uh, we will try uh, to, to continue uh, this uh, precondition, certainly under the light of this new uh, judgment of the European uh, uh, Court of Justice. Uh, but I think it's possible. Uh, we have to change some things, um, as I mentioned, um, um, but uh, I think it's uh, even possible in the in the in the future. Uh, and uh, you are, you um, qu uh, rose the question if I know another field in which uh, in migrants in Germany are successful. Um, for instance, Eschen Chain. Uh, he's one of the uh, the co-chairmen of the Deutsche Bank, uh, the biggest uh, uh, German bank, uh, and. I would say 10 years ago or 15 years ago, no one, no one uh, would have thought that it's possible that a non-German uh, uh, would lead the, the biggest and the most important German bank. Uh, so in a certain way, uh, I think this, this is a big success. And a lot of, uh, not, not only he's from India, uh, probably you know, but uh, we have uh, a lot of, uh, um, yeah, um, managers from Switzerland, from Austria, uh, who are very successful in, in big German enterprises. Uh, so I would say uh, especially the German economy and especially uh, the, the big enterprises in Germany, the, the DAX enterprises, they are quite open for migrants uh, uh, to uh, uh, proceed in, 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 high, um, in high jobs uh, in their uh, enterprises. Uh, so. Um, if I um, may answer the second question concerning the uh, acceptance of uh, qualifications, uh, how, how is the way in Germany? We passed a law in the last legislature which indicates that we want to lower the standards to accept exams and qualifications from migrants from other countries. So this also especially refers uh, to uh, a lot of uh, exams um, which have been done by migrants from the eastern part of, uh, of Europe, uh, from the, uh, so the former Soviet Union, the, uh, the Russian Federation, or Kazakhstan. We have a lot of, they are, certainly they are migrants. Uh, they, they came to Germany in the 90s, uh, but uh, from origin they are German. And uh, by our constitutional law, uh, they, are, they have German passports, uh, but the problems of integration are uh, similar to those of um, migrants have from other countries and who are not uh, German citizens. Uh, but uh, we made the experience that they, o they uh, uh, often have uh, uh, high qualifications. They, they are medicines. They uh, have PhDs. Uh, they, they worked uh, in their home countries or in their former home countries as, uh, as nurses. Uh, and uh, they had problems um, in the last years to be accepted or their qualifications to be accepted in Germany. And so we passed a law. And our wish would be that about 300,000 uh, qualifications uh, undertaken in other countries um, are now accepted uh, in Germany. So we, we know this problem. And we have this problem uh, similar to France, also in Germany. Um, and I think we, we lowered uh, and decreased these problems in a certain way by, by this law, uh, which was passed in the last uh, legislature. Hi, uh, Nausicaa from Italy, from Bocconi University. Uh, my question is, uh, do you think there is room for a shift of the whole policy on immigration from the level state to the European level state? Because I think that uh, member states are differently affected by this problem, and in my case, my country, Italy, is very, very affected from the immigration problem. There is, I think, first of all, a human responsibility toward people, which are dying on a daily basis in our seas. 
So do you think that since we all know the weight of Germany on the, in the European framework, do you think there is the possibility to make this total shift? Because currently the member states, they keep, they retain the competence, for example, when they deal with the working policy, how many people accept in their country. So I'm wondering if there is this possibility to shift it all to the European level. Mille grazie. Another question. Un'altra domanda. Uh, thank you. Um, just a remark first. When I came to Germany many years ago, I didn't speak a word uh, German. And it was not a problem. I learned it here. Okay? On the contrary, um, a few years ago, a friend of my daughter, uh, who is Turkish um, and uh, works here, has been working for years, married a doctor who is a migrant too, highly uh, competent. And this Turkish friend of my daughter wanted to invite her mother from Istanbul to the wedding. It wasn't allowed. So that's uh, very strange, I think. S and then you said uh, another point I would like to make. You said Germany takes most refugees. Uh, it's not true, just not true. Turkey uh, is taking, a, I don't know the exact ciphers. Well, I think almost two millions, I think it's true, uh, refugees from Syria. As far as I know, Germany took 5,000, maybe a little more now, but you can't say that Germany takes the most refugees. It's not true. Sweden takes all, uh, as far as I know, Sweden takes everyone in demand, but not Germany. And then another point I would like to make. Uh, what about the asylum um, demanders? who especially, I think, in Bavaria, are put in a sort of, uh, I don't know how I would qualify that, um, in centers where they, don't, uh, where they are not allowed to work, even if they are highly competent, um, which are far away from cities, and they have no possibility to go to a city, uh, which is very... Hmm? Um, and that's why uh, we have in Berlin uh, um, asylum seekers demonstrating what well, they have been demonstrating for months now. So um, there are uh, quite a lot of points with, with which uh, I don't agree at all with you. Uh, my name is Iman, um, and uh, I have uh, one question for you. I would like to know from uh, a political point of view, please, uh, would you consider the misfortune of uh, countries in the Middle East, such as Syria, uh, a fortune for Germany, taking in consideration uh, three points. First one is that uh, Germany needs at least every year 200,000 new immigrants just to keep the welfare and the economic system running. And uh, also that you have mentioned that all the applicants from Syria have been accepted by 100%. So, uh, what, yeah, what would you say about that? Thank you. Do we, do we have time for another? I have, I have enough time. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Asia Chatovic. I come from Belgrade, Serbia. So coming from a point that uh, in Germany, the most of refugees do come from Serbia, uh, my question is, uh, from your point of view, uh, how did it influence the German society and did it aid the development of any sector, maybe the uh, scientific development since all of the most uh, famous scientists do come from Serbia? Thank you.
Perhaps. <laughs> Hello? Okay, oh, awesome. All right, thank you very much for coming. Um, earlier in your speech, you mentioned that <clears throat> immigrants coming to Germany should learn the host country's language, which I think is entirely reasonable. Um, but you also mentioned that integration was a two-way street. So have you yet publicly advocated that German schools should teach Turkish as a second language? And if not, why not? <laughs> Perhaps we make a break here. Um, first, um, I'd like to start with a very interesting question: If we should make a shift of the um, concerning the competence of uh, of lawmaking uh, in the for, for um, uh, immigration law from the national level to the European level, um, I have to to line out that in a in a lot of ways uh, we have the competence already on the European level. We have uh, common standards concerning the asylum uh, uh, procedures, uh, the, um, uh, the, uh, the um, uh, preconditions or the, the minimum conditions for um, taking uh, the asylum seekers in, in certain um, homes. In, 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 uh, so um, in, a, in a lot of ways, we have the Dublin, the Dublin uh, uh, two and three. Um, regulation. So in a lot of ways we have integrated um, European um, migration and uh, especially asylum um, law, but to be honest and to be clear, I'm not willing in giving more competences from the national level to the, uh, to the European level because I think especially concerning uh, the topic of, li uh, uh, of legal migration, of the migration of workforce, we have to um, to admit that we we have uh, not one common European um, uh, labor market. Uh, we have 28 different labor markets, and as I mentioned, we have a lot of migrants now from uh, from Portugal, from Spain, from Greece. Uh, this is due to the to the financial and the economic crisis. Uh, the the area I come from, uh, we have uh, an unemployment rate um, about uh, three percent, and a lot of uh, uh, enterprises, they uh, are um, complaining about not finding uh, the um, finding high qualified workers. Uh, in in my my constituency is in the southeast of Bavaria, neighboring uh, uh, Austria. We don't have a problem of too too, man, too many uh, unemployed persons. Uh, we have a problem of uh, less uh, qualified uh, and high skilled workers. So uh, we have different labor markets in. Uh, in, in, in Europe, from Reykjavik uh, to um, to Malta, and from Ireland uh, to Romania. So I'm uh, deeply convinced that it would be the wrong way to try uh, to to concentrate all the um, the competence for legal migration and for uh, especially for the migration of workforce from outside of the European Union on the European Union. Uh, certainly, I know I was in Lampedusa, I, I was uh, in, uh, in, in Sicily, and I know that uh, um, Italy is taking a, a big burden uh, concerning especially the refugees from the North uh, uh, African coast. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, we had uh, a lot of problems beginning in the 90s. So we had years uh, in which we had more than 400,000 uh, asylum seekers in Germany and no one uh, helped us, we help Italy. There is a common standard of Frontex uh, and uh, we provide the German, uh, the German government, uh, the German federal police uh, provides a lot of help to Italy and to Malta um, to take this burden of the high number of asylum seekers. So, um, I, we, we don't leave Italy and the other countries in, the sou in, in Southern Europe uh, alone, but I'm deeply convinced it would be the wrong way uh, to concentrate uh, the, the competence for, for um, uh, migration more on the European level. And uh, yeah, um, then, yeah, certainly you are right. You, you also can learn German in Germany, and uh, mostly it's uh, better to learn the 
the, um, the mother language in, in language in, in those in this country in which this mother language is spoken. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, I made it clear that our precondition of uh, spouses who wanted uh, to migrate to their husbands to Germany um, was that we want to make them uh, stronger. Uh, certainly a lot of, uh, though, I, I don't want to generalize and I, I don't want to say that every case is the same, but we had these cases in which uh, um, uh, husbands forced uh, their spouses to marriage, they didn't, didn't speak one word of German, so they were completely uh, uh, dependent on their on their husbands. Certainly, there are these cases you mentioned. One uh, in in which it's no problem. Uh, the the spouses come to Germany and they learn German here in Germany. But uh, unfortunately, we have other cases. And I'm okay. Yeah, <laughs> and as I and I mentioned, unfortunately, in the past we made the experience that especially uh, migrants uh, from Turkey had sometimes these problems. I, I don't want to say that all, all the, uh, uh, these uh, migrants had those problems, but uh, these uh, cases occurred uh, that sometimes, uh, yeah, um, the, the spouses came to Germany, they didn't speak one word of German, they uh, weren't allowed to learn German, and uh, I think uh, this is not the right way. So uh, I think the, the best way would be is uh, at least to learn some basic skills of German before you come to Germany. Now we have this new judgment of the of the um, um, uh, Court of Just of the European Court of Justice. Certainly, we are discussing about another system if we should force the migrants when they come to Germany to learn German. But then it's not quite so easy. I mentioned we had uh, uh, until now uh, we 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 had more than 1.5 million persons. Uh, uh, who attended these uh, language and integration courses, um, but uh, not everyone who, who uh, was uh, obliged to, to attend these courses attended it uh, actually. Uh, some didn't, uh, didn't, uh, didn't, uh, didn't, uh, didn't show um, off. Uh, they, they, uh, they didn't come to the, to the courses, and uh, then it's not so easy. Certainly you can discuss about sanctions, but um, if you, you can't force them out of the country so, so easily. So I, I think the best way is to learn at least some words of German, some basic skills of German before you come uh, to Germany. Um, and you, in a, in a by sentence, you, you mentioned uh, the denial of the invitation for the marriage in, in Germany. This is another problem. Uh, to, to you, you, you have to, uh, that's a problem. At, uh, that's a uh, that's a wiser that's a wiser problem. On the one hand, you have the denial of the uh, of of uh, of migrating to Germany, uh, and you mentioned one problem of denial of uh, of uh, of a wiser. Uh, I I regret this, but that hasn't but that hasn't. No, I don't. I don't justify uh, this uh, this uh, uh, this judgment. Uh, this was a judgment done by, the, I, I would say, by the by the by the embassy in in, in Ankara or by the uh, general consulate in in Istanbul. And every every case is uh, is different. So certainly, perhaps perhaps the, uh, a mistake was made, but this has nothing to do with uh, with our uh, um, um, demands uh, concerning. Uh, learning basic skills of German before you come to Germany, not only for, for a marriage and for a short uh, visit, but for staying here forever. And so you, you have to, to differentiate, uh, differentiate these, two, uh, these two cases. Uh, so you mentioned the behavior of Bavaria uh, treating the asylum seekers. There is no other way in Bavaria than in other states. We have a common federal law. And you mentioned that in Bavaria, it should not be allowed for them to work. Uh, you, you said that uh, they are high skilled. Excuse me? Not only there. Yeah, not only there, every. And we passed a law. I mentioned, I mentioned the law we passed before the summer break concerning uh, three countries of the Western Balkan to be declared as uh, safe countries of origin. And in this law, there is another point included, and I think that's a very interesting point, uh, we want to uh, decrease uh, the, um, uh, the, the time uh, an asylum seeker is not allowed to work from now nine months to then three months. So the new law 
will indicate that after three months after the uh, arrival in Germany, every asylum seeker is allowed to work. So this is a big progress and there are a lot of conservatives also in my party and in the party of uh, Joachim Pfeiffer, my um, distinguished colleague uh, who just appeared, uh, who are not very uh, sympathetic to this, uh, to this new uh, uh, rule. But I think it's, it's okay because I mentioned, and uh, Joachim Pfeiffer comes from Baden-Württemberg and we have the same uh, luxury problem. We don't have many uh, um, uh, unemployment, uh, per, uh, unemployed persons. We, are, we have, uh, uh, on another way, in another way, the problem of, uh, of a lack of high-skilled workers. So I think it's the right way to reduce this uh, time uh, with, uh, after which um, uh, an asylum seeker is allowed to work. So if this law is passed in autumn this year, uh, asylum seekers are allowed to work after three months. And I think that's okay, that's a, it's a good progress. And um, you mentioned Syria again, and uh, I was in Jordan and in, uh, in the north part of, uh, of Iraq two weeks ago. So I, I'm, I really, I'm really convinced that uh, it's the biggest humanitarian catastrophe we have now on our globe, which occurs in uh, Syria and in the neighboring countries of Syria. And certainly everyone is right that not only Turkey uh, has taken, I think, now more than 700,000 uh, refugees, uh, especially Lebanon. Lebanon has oh, taken two... two no, not, to, not Turkey, not Turkey, too many. Too many eight, eight, eight or seven, seven or 800,000. Most of the refugees have come to Lebanon. I was in Jordan. Jordan has about 600,000 uh, refugees from Syria, but I don't want to concentrate too much on the numbers. I'm and I was, I was in Kilis in, uh, on the, in the Turkish uh, border uh, I, I, and, and as I watched and I visited uh, a lot of uh, refugee camps in, in Turkey, in Jordan, now in the north of, of Iraq. And this is a big catastrophe, to be clear and to be honest, and uh, you can't uh, um, d deny it. Uh, and Germany uh, is, uh, is taking a lot of Syrian refugees. Now we had taken more than 40,000 refugees and asylum seekers from Syria. Every month, 1,800 asylum seekers from Syria come to Germany and all of them are accepted. All of them are allowed to work from the first day of their arrival on. Uh, they are treated in, a, in, a, in another way than other asylum seekers. So uh, I think, um, I, I don't want to mention it too, too proudly. And, and certainly uh, uh, Lebanon and Jordan and Turkey uh, have a very uh, have a much bigger burden uh, than Germany and other European countries. But I would wish that other European countries, uh, in a certain way, would take Germany as an example and uh, hire and increase their number of uh, Syrian refugees. And I think Germany is is doing quite good in this topic. And. Uh, uh, certainly, we, 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 we don't uh, have a reason to be too proud, but we don't uh, must be too modest. Uh, we are quite good in taking uh, Syrian uh, refugees, and we will increase this. Um, in, in, in June, um, the um, ministers of uh, internal affairs of the state level and of the federal level decided to take 20,000 more uh, Syrian refugees. Certainly, that's only a, a small part concerning the the, the huge amount of, of, ref of refugees in Syria and in the neighboring countries, but I think it's a, a very clear signal uh, and a very humanitarian signal from Germany. So, uh, the lady over there, you, you me? mentioned Serbia. Oh. I, I, don't, I, won't, I want to be short because I, I? I'm taking over the time of, of Joachim Pfeiffer, so I only want to answer the last questions which yeah, were Can risen. I just make very, very quickly... Uh, Quick Quickly. Yes, yes. No, because no. you... Uh, Excuse me, we're really running out of I time. I have okay. two more questions. The one from Serbia. I'm okay. deeply convinced that Serbia is a very improving country. But on the other way, when you see the acceptance rate of asylum seekers, uh, the acceptance rate is 0, 0.0 of asylum seekers from, from Serbia. And even the Serbian government and the Serbian prime minister wanted us and wanted the Minister for Internal uh, Interior uh, uh, Affairs of Germany to uh, declare Serbia as a, as a safe country of origin. So um, this, this declaration isn't uh, uh, an insult of Serbia. I think you should take it in another way. 
it's a, a clear signal that we have the impression that Serbia is a democratic country. It's a, co it's a country uh, in which there is no organized torture, in which there is no persecution of any uh, uh, population, of any people. So uh, I think uh, it's not an uh, insult uh, when you declare a country of, uh, as, a, as a, a safe country of origin. It's, uh, I would not say it's an honor, but it's a clear signal that we rely on uh, Serbia and we uh, think that Serbia is on the right track uh, to the European Union. And the last que uh, question was why, do not, uh, why, why uh, uh, I don't promote a Turkish uh, as a second language uh, here uh, in Germany. Um, I think um, we, we, in, we in Bavaria, we have a second language, it's German. Uh, first we speak, uh, speak Bavarian, then we, we speak um, uh, German. And uh, the third language is English, uh, but uh, to be um, to be clear, uh, I think the second language uh, in our times is Fra French or, or Spanish, and certainly a lot of I, I only can speak for for, for Bavaria, but a lot of uh, grammar schools uh, they offer uh, other languages like Russian or Turkish, so um, no one should be forced. Uh, as the second, f certainly the first language must be uh, English, and uh, there are, is, uh, is at least in Bavaria, still a lot of students who choose Latin as a second uh, language, and this is a good, uh, a good basis uh, for other uh, Roman uh, languages like French or like Italian. It's a uh, uh, lingua meravigliosa. Uh, um, so you are very free in Germany to uh, learn uh, this language you want to, and you should not be forced uh, to learn any language uh, absolutely uh, as a second language. So it was very interesting, and, but I want to take uh, uh, Joachim's time. I know there are still some questions, but thank you very much. It was a very lively and a very interesting uh, discussion, and I wish you all the best here for the symposium and uh, certainly for your stay here in Berlin. Thank you very much.